Welcome to HMLL.com. In this video, we're going to place the radiator in this 2001 Dodge Ram 1500 4x4. And the problem this owner had, he noticed after he's driving it, is just a little bit of a puddle underneath, directly underneath the radiator. Upon inspection, he noticed that it was leaking in one of the seams of the radiator and just running down and dripping there on the ground. Now, it only happened, though, after he would drive it, so it was only leaking when the radiator was under pressure. Now, you usually have two options here. One, you can have your radiator repaired by a local radiator shop, or two, you can replace it. Well, we got a good deal on a new radiator, so we decided to go ahead and just replace this one. Now, we're going to review with you the tools we use to do this job. We have our new radiator. We have some Teflon tape, 11 16 line wrench for the transmission lines. We have an 8 millimeter wrench for the battery cable. We have some wire cutters, a 10 millimeter socket for the fan shroud bolts and the 3H ratchet. We have a flathead screwdriver, or standard screwdriver, quick disconnect tool. You get these at your local auto parts stores. And also, you can get these at the local auto parts stores. There are some plastic fasteners, you'll need four of them. We have a funnel and some new antifreeze, a shop light, some safety glasses, a 3 8 hose for draining the radiator, and we have our drain pan. We also have two plastic bags and two rubber bands for covering up the transmission lines. First we're going to drain the radiator. So you notice this plug is on the driver's side bottom of the radiator. We're going to attach the 3 8 drain hose to this port on the bottom. Move our drain pan into position under the hose. Remove our top radiator cap. Open up the drain plug. Allow your radiator to drain. Also, be careful with this radiator antifreeze. I mean, we need to um, dispose it properly because it's dangerous to pets and other animals. Once it's finished draining, go ahead and close your valve, and we're going to remove the upper radiator hose. Using our standard screwdriver, open, loosen up the hose clamp, and remove the hose. You might want to place the, the drain pan under the transmission lines because you're going to lose some transmission fluid at this point. Keep it off your floor. Once you remove it, we'll place the plastic bag over it and use our rubber band. Just keep debris from getting in the lines. Then we're going to go down to the bottom hose, transmission line, remove the fastening clip, use our quick disconnect tool, put it into position, push it up into the hose. Push the hose forward toward the radiator and then pull back. Again, we're going to place the, another plastic bag over, over this one. And then we're going to remove the lower radiator hose. Again, keep your drain pan under this because you'll probably lose some fluid. And then we're going to remove the coolant recovery bottle. Basically, you press in in the middle of the of the bottle on the um, on the fence shroud. Press in on the fence shroud and pick the bottle up. Then we're going to move the wash the windshield washer fluid. Do the same thing about pushing in on the fence shroud. And we're also going to disconnect the wires for the washer pump and for the load fluid indicator. And also, we're going to remove the hose. When you do this, you put all the fluid will pour out, so we put our finger under it. We plugged it with our finger, then we drained it. And here we're showing we're removing the low fluid sensor connection. Lows is removed, just go ahead and set your fluid bottle out of the way. Then we're going to go ahead and remove the fan shroud. We have four bolts, two on each side, using our 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. And 
Once we get the belts removed on one side, we move to the other. With all four bolts removed, we'll go ahead and set the fan shroud back a little bit. This will allow us to get to that radiator. Here, there are some plastic fasteners holding these splash shields on, so we we'll just go ahead and clip those with our wire cutters. And then we're going to replace them, so no worries here. Now we're going to remove the radiator. Again, I believe we're using our 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. Once you have the bolts and mounts removed, we're going to just slide our radiator up out of the way. Now these are the two holes on the bottom of the frame that the radiator sits in. So we need to position it correctly when we put it back in. Then we're going to get ready to install our hardware. These are our transmission lines. We use some Teflon tape to seal the transmission lines. Just be careful to get the, trans the Teflon tape into the radiator. So make sure you don't cover the end of it. Then we're going to install the new clips. This is what the shroud fastens into. We're going to put the rubber feet on the bottom and then we're going to fix up the the mounts for the top. We slide this insert into the into the mount. There's a one side has an indention where the plastic the metal insert will fit into. Then we're getting ready to install our radiator. We'll carefully slide it into position, making sure to line up the rubber mounts and with the holes on the bottom. Then we're going to slide our rubber mounts on the top of the radiator into place and insert our screws, or our bolts actually. Start both of them by hand. We'll tighten them down using our 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. Then we're going to slide our shroud into place. Again, just lining up the bolts with by hand. We want to start with the bottom here. We can start with the bottom on both sides. Tighten them down with our ratchet and socket. Be careful to over tighten. Then move to the top, install those. on both sides. Then we're going to use our plastic inserts to attach the splash guard. Then we're going to attach the lower radiator hose. Tighten it up. We need to connect our transmission lines. So we're going to start with the bottom one. It should just slide into place and snap in when it's in position. Pull it back a little bit to make sure. We're going to install our clip. And then we're going to install our top 
transmission line. Start it by hand, make sure you don't cross thread it, and then we'll just kind of snug it down using our 11 sixteenths line wrench. Now we're going to reattach our overflow bottle. Now we reinstall our washer bottle. Reconnect all the, all the lines and our electrical connections. First we started with the fluid line. And then we're going to attach the connectors for the wiper or the washer motor. Then we're going to attach our connection for the low fluid sensor. Make sure your bottle is in position. Then we'll go ahead and attach the upper radiator hose. Tighten on the hose clamp with your screwdriver. Reattach your negative battery cable. And then we're going to add any freeze to our system. Check for any leaks. Well, we hope this video will help you change the radiator in your 2001 Dodge Ram 1500. Send so any comments you may have to comments at teachmeall.com. And as always, thank you for visiting teachmeall.com and have a great day.